this illusion is called the dance, yet it holds a lot of intricacy. The dance is the finale of this 9x12 canvas paper pad, and I really think it was a very strong finish and very true to form for me. At random yesterday, I was sketching as I had a lot of free time before that. Nearly useless appointment for an endocrinologist referral. I was quite bored, so all my sketches were done rather mindlessly. And when I reflected on what to paint, this one really excited me when I looked back through. The jaunty, janky flow it has, yet the motion it conveys, it's really in its own dystopian world. Um, dance macabre, if you will. If this is the end, an offbeat dancer is fitting. The head looks down at the body, bewildered at what possesses it, distant and estranged, eerily high as it gaily twirls and dances. It can make no sense of the situation. The body has a mind of its own. It moves in an unnatural manner, twisting and torting without shame. The gaping torso is raw in a flurry of activity as it tries to sustain the enchanted body as it dances carelessly on a dismal plane. The contrast of the symbolism and the colors is becoming a signature for me. The painting made me realize I'm quite inspired by death, but I don't think I've ever painted or created something that's such a motif of it, which is odd to say and also sort of dumb to say, but before I've just acted, I'm innately drawn to darker subject matter, death included, but death also most at the forefront. I mean, I often look at the non-binary artist Sonia Lauzo, I believe that's how you say their name. They have a print, Death Walks With Me, but it's okay because they're friendly though. And they did that in 2021. The Etsy description says it's for Morals Market, an event made by the Order of the Good Death. And I've read so much. That's a rabbit hole. I want to be short and concise, so I'll say that I think it's fitting that this painting is one of my favorites. All of them are sort of my favorites except for one. One of the 20 really irks me. It expresses from this 20-piece collection I did in nine days that the end, much like some people's lives, can be more impactful than the beginning. When you think of it that way, the consummate of life can be the end and has been the end for artists in particular. Eartha Kitt um, has that quote that I've said before, my tombstone is my diploma. Granted, when she died, as her daughter put it, she was upset and didn't want to die, so take that with a grain of salt. On another note, I ordered some books that I imagine will make a lovely addition to my growing dark library, albeit it's only really a few shelves. I got one on Haunted, well the title is Cursed Items, another on Seances that crosses over a bit into Divination, one about spiritualists, and I almost got one about, I think it's hoax photographers called apparitionists based in the Victorian era. And then I actually ended up getting the one that I mentioned that I had wanted from my wish list by Caitlin of Ask a Mortician from Here to Eternity. And lastly, the two final books in the Starl series, although I thought there was only one, and by meaning to buy it for a year but it turns out there are two and since I need to feel complete I must read it and therefore must buy it because my library doesn't carry it and also my library like back in 2015 deleted my account although you know I had 
of the library card, like, all my life. Like, I knew how to read, I've known how to read since I was three. So it's just like, oh, okay, and I could make one, but it's just like, I don't want to start over. And they've really changed the library so much, I hate it. Um, my library has two sides, maybe three, where it's like magical, mythical, and then gothic, horror, slash death. Those are the dominant two. I just have a vision in my head of how my shelves would look, and me, a well-read woman. My cursed object book, like, maybe right between my quackery book and my death in the afterlife book, and then when I put in the From Here to Eternity, beside my Breverton's Phantasmagoria book. Ugh. Although, the ones I already have, they're hardbacks, and I'm more of a paperback person, even though I have, like, semi-phobia of paper cuts. They're like, they're, they, you could torture someone with paper cuts. I bet they would crack real quick. And the hardbacks they have are nice. They're, they're coming with the gold and the textured sort of cloth covers. So, you know, despite them not being my favorite, I can't really fault them. If you take anything away from this video, it is art, truly art, and art goes on. So I will in my next video. Thank you for watching.